Hello and welcome to another indie game devlog slash tutorial where we create an endless runner in 3D using Unity. This episode will be the second part where we focus on creating some particle effects. In the last episode we already created ourselves some effects for dirt particles while running, a glitter effect for our coins and also an effect when we collect a coin. Today we'll be focusing on an effect when our player lands after a jump and when he gets hit by an enemy. If you'd like to see more in-depth devlogs please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the like button if you like this video. I also really much appreciate your feedback and ideas on the game and on the content as well of course so please leave me a comment and share your thoughts but enough talking with not much further ado let's dive right into unity and let's get going all right so let's focus on our landing after a jump effect first for this i create a new particle system as a child of my model root so that it basically moves with the player model now we need to make a few adjustments first of all this effect won't be played in a loop but just when the player actually lands so i uncheck the looping checkbox and also the play on awake checkbox um also the duration is way too long let's set it to about 0.5 seconds here and let's also use the same value for the lifetime we also need to change our simulation space from local to world so that the single particles don't get moved with the player but just the emitter next i don't want the particles to get emitted over time i just want to use a burst effect like we did in our collecting coin effect so i go to the emission module and set rate over time to zero and I also create a new particle burst and set it to 50 for now. What I also wanted to change is the shape of our emitter. So I go to shape and I change the shape from a cone to a circle. Also I want to turn the emitter by minus 90 degrees on the x-axis. I also need to change the radius of our shape so that the particles get emitted from right between the legs of our dog. Alright so far so good. You might have noticed that our particles are way too big right now. But before I change the size I will first change the look of our particles. So I go to the renderer module and I select a new material. For the landing effect I will go with this cloud or smoke one, but you can basically add whatever you like. You can add custom sprites for your particle effects like this one fairly easy. Okay, now let's continue by setting up our size. I will go with a random value between two constants here and I want it to be between 0 and maybe 0.2. Looks good so far. Now let's also randomize the rotation since it's looking a little bit too uniform to me. So let's use a random value between two constants here as well and let's go with a value between 0 and uh, 359. Looks much better already. Now let's also randomize our colors as well. I will use white for both values but with uh, different alpha values to randomize just the transparency. The first value will be fully transparent and the second about 50%. Next let's set up our speed. Once again I use a random value between two constants and for the first value I use 0 and for the second I use 3. You see it's getting more and more like we want it to be. I think it looks pretty decent already but let's tweak some more. Next let's go to our color over lifetime module. This like the name I suggest lets you define a color transition over a particle lifetime. In our case we want our particles to fade out. With the sliders right here you can basically tweak the transition to your needs. The top ones are used for defining the alpha value and the bottom ones to change the color. You can also add more sliders by just clicking on the position above or below the color output. If we change the colors now, we can achieve a pretty funky looking result as you see. But for our effect, we just need the initial one, so let's quickly get rid of the rest and I just set the alpha value at the top slider to the maximum. Alright, now let's take a look at the size over lifetime module next. Similar to color over lifetime, here we can basically define how the particle size changes over the lifetime of a particle. So I just click on the value field and that brings up uh, our curve editor here at the bottom of our inspector. Let's just drag that up a little bit so that we can see it better. Now we want our particles to go from small to big to small again. You see we have two points here which we can move around and define the size. If we click on a point, we also have these handles here where we can change the transition between the two values. Like I mentioned before, we want our particles to start small and end small, but we need a point in between where it is big. To add a new point, we just need to double click somewhere on the curve. Now I just need to drag this up a little bit and also move it a little to the left because I want him to get big fast in the beginning and slowly dissolve. Now let's check it out real quick. Alright, I think that looks awesome so far. Now, let's write some code to make our effect play right after our player is landing after a jump. Like with the dirt particles while running, I will also do this in our animation control script of our player game object, so let's quickly open that up in Visual Studio. First, what we need to do is add a reference to our landing particle system. Now we go to our onLand method and just play the landing particles. Back in Unity, we of course need to drag our particle system into the slot in our animation control script in the inspector. Alright, and this is it. Now we are basically ready for testing, so let's hop right into the gameplay and let's see how our effect turns out. Okay, it works and it doesn't look too bad at all, but I feel like it could be improved. So let me play around with the values a little bit and figure it out.
Alright, and this is my result. I like it pretty much, but I might tweak this even more in the future to make it look really really crisp. But I think we have a pretty decent result so far. Now that we have our landing particle ready, let's focus on the effect when we get hit by an enemy next. For testing, I just drag an enemy prefab into my scene. I create a new particle system and I call it enemy hit particle. Now first let's make some quick changes. Like with the landing effect we don't want this to be played as a loop and we also disable play on awake. Also I set the duration in the lifetime to 1 second. Next I want to change the shape of our particle emitter to a sphere and I also change the radius to kinda match our corona model. Now let's go to our renderer module and let's select another material. I just go with this simple circle here for now. For our emission we also want to use a particle burst, so I set the rate over time to zero and I create a burst of about let's say 100 particles. I want the effect to be impactful since this is part of the death animation of our player. Ok, now let's go back to the basic settings and let's change our color. I want it to have a similar green like our enemy. Also I want to change the value type uh, to a random between two colors. I also use the same color for the second value, but I changed the alpha value from the first one to zero so that the transparency is kind of randomized. Ok, let's also set up our size. Again I want to go for a random value between two constants and I set the first one to zero and the second to one. Ok, let's quickly test it out. I guess I reduced the speed to about four looks alright for the moment I guess. Now I want to talk about another thing regarding the particle system. You can basically nest particle systems. So in many cases you will actually don't just use one particle systems but nest many of them to create one effect. An explosion for example has different elements. You have a fireball, you have smoke, you have that uh, sparks coming out of it and so on. Each of that will be a known particle system but nested on a remain system and combined they would be an explosion effect. Now for our getting hit by an enemy effect we do something very similar. So let's create ourselves a new particle system as a child object of our recently created one. I will now quickly set this up, I make this short for you to not bore you. I again just change the duration and the lifetime to 1 like in our main system and I uncheck the looping and the play on awake checkbox. I also set the speed to 1 and the color to the same green and I also use a particle burst of let's say 20 particles. For our shape I will use a sphere again and I will also set the radius to about the same value of our main particle system. Now I want to use other visuals for our particles. So I go to the renderer module and I select a material and I think I go with these skull sprites. I think they look pretty awesome. Now let's quickly check this out. When we play our main particle system it will also play the nested ones which will be handy when we play our effect later in our code. Well, I think it's pretty cool, I like it already, but if I change it or not, pretty much depends on how the feeling is when I test it later in our actual gameplay. I want to introduce you to one last other thing before we go ahead and start coding. And this is the noise module. I want to use it to make our inner skull particles to have some noise in their movement. The noise module basically allows you to add some turbulence to your particles based on a pattern you can create from different values. But first we will change the quality from high to low to save some performance on mobile. You'll see that the noise image in the preview has changed to a much less complex pattern. But that's fine for us, we don't need to do super advanced stuff right here and since it's for mobile we need to save as much performance as we can wherever we can. Alright, now let's define our strength. This value defines how strong the noise effect is. I don't want to exaggerate right here but it should be bold enough to see it. Also I want to change the frequency to let's say about 1. About the frequency you can say that the lower the value is the smoother the noise becomes. If you use high values the noise will create rapid changes. Ok, so far so good. I think we have a pretty decent result right now and it's about time to write some code to get our effects in the game. But before I need to create a prefab from our main particle system right here. So I just go to my particle directory and I just drag and drop it from the hierarchy into my folder in the project panel. Alright, now we can delete this stuff from our scene and we are ready to start coding. Since this is an effect getting played after an enemy hits our player, I will implement it in our player collision controller. So I quickly open that up in Visual Studio. Now of course we need a reference to our particle prefab first, so I create a new public variable and I call it uh, enemy hit particle. Now we go to our on collision enter method where we already react to enemy collision. By now we just restart the level but I comment this out for now. To make it behave like we wanted to we need to do a few things. First we want the player and the enemy to stop moving. Then I want a particle effect to play and I also want to wait for about let's say half a second or so and then restart the level. To stop the player from moving I will first use the get component method to pull the rigid body component of our player and I set is kinematic to true. That means that forces will no longer affect our player's physics. Also I want to pull our walker controller and I set the movement speed to zero. This will nullify any player inputs. 
Next, we need to set up our enemy. For this, I use the collision object and then game object, and I also use the get component method to get our rigid body, and I also set his kinematic to true so that he doesn't uh, react to physics anymore. Okay, this is it for the movement part. Let's now instantiate our particle effect. For the position, I simply use the position of our collision object as well as for the rotation. Alright, and now we are ready to test. Now let's go back to Unity and of course we need to drag our prefab into the slot of our collision controller in the inspector. And that's it. Now let's test it out real quick and see how that works. Yeah, it works fine and I think it's looking pretty awesome. I kinda like it. The last thing we need to do is to restart our level, so let's go back to our code. If we simply would restart, the player won't see our collision effect, so we have to wait for a short period of time. I will use a coroutine for that. So let's write another method. For the return type, we use I enumerator and I call my method wait and restart. As a parameter, we want to have a float for our waiting time. Now in our method, we simply use yield return new and then wait for seconds in our wait time parameter. This will basically pause the execution until the wait time is over. After that we just reload our scene. Very simple and easy. Alright, that should be it, so let's quickly test out if our code works. As you see it works properly. After we get hit by an enemy, our effect gets played and the level restarts shortly afterwards. And this is basically it for this episode's implementation. So let's now take a quick look at our results. We implemented a landing after a jump effect, which you can see here. I think it looks pretty awesome and improves the overall responsiveness of our visuals a lot. Also we created an effect when the player gets hit by an enemy and we also changed the way our level reloads. I'm pretty happy with the results right now, I think our effects look awesome and they pretty much fit the style of the game. Also having an effect when getting hit by the coronavirus adds to the feeling that this is an actual game. This is it for today's episode guys, if you liked this video and want to see more Unity devlogs and tutorials, please consider subscribing to my channel and also hit the like button if you liked this video. Also I appreciate any feedback, tips and thoughts and I will also of course answer your questions, so please drop a comment if you like. Coming up in the next episode we will further improve the death animation of our dog. At the moment he's just standing around, the particle effect plays and then the level reloads. But we will add some sort of crazy animation to it to make it feel much more impactful. If you have any wishes on upcoming videos or topics please let me know in the comments. Alright guys, so with not much further to do, I'm out, take care, bye bye.